Thanks so much for joining me today, Priyanka. I know you are really stressed, so I'm not going to, uh, you know, waste more time with uh, dog talk. We can do that later on WhatsApp. But, uh, you know, congratulations. I know you've been working very hard on this big issue of trying to get pregnant women uh, their vaccination dose, and that that's finally come through. Uh, you know, what, what was your... Um, feeling behind getting this done? I mean, there's been a lot of confusion because, you know, the other day I spoke with a, a doctor and she said that, you know, we've spoken with the government. We wanted Moderna or Pfizer only for pregnant women. And, you know, we're not very comfortable ourselves with Covishield or Covaxin for pregnant women. But I think to each their own, perhaps, you know, if we give the women the choice, what do you exactly. have? What, what was your take? Exactly. This, this, the last sentence uh, was uh, my take. I, exactly. I was like, it is the woman's choice. It is her body. It's her biological process. And you cannot keep a, sub, you know, a you know, set of people out because of a biological process. It is a decision that they have taken, A, to get pregnant, B, wanting to take a vaccine after having read through whatever literature that is out there amongst people. Let, now, we must understand, as far as data is concerned, I remember when uh, Covaxin was, um, uh, you know, given the DCGI approvals without uh, third, data tri third phase data trials in place, we showed that leap of faith. We showed that it is, yes, this is uh, something that has gone through the process, may not have gone through the final process, but it was open for vaccination because DCGI had approved it. So why is it that pregnant women are not being allowed to make that choice? Yes, I would have also wanted Moderna or Pfizer, but let the woman decide. If she doesn't want a vaccine, again, it's not a compulsory vaccine. If she doesn't want it, she doesn't want it. If she wants it, nobody can deny her that. Right. At least she has a choice now going forward. I completely, completely exactly. agree with you. I think, I think that, was a, a, that was an initiative that was really needed. Uh, but, you know, uh, Priyanka, going into the larger picture of, uh, like I was saying before you joined, you know, Maharashtra, in a sense, has been seen, as somebody wrote, as like a bellwether state when it's come to COVID, you know. The indications all have come from Maharashtra, which way we're going to go, whether the waves are going to hit hard or not hard. And I know that yesterday uh, it was a record number of uh, inoculations that were given for COVID. But is it still a mixed bag? Is it still, you know, a day at a time for the simple reason? Like today I was reading Pune, there was a shortage of vaccination. I've seen photos of, you know, uh, young ones standing, waiting for vaccination. So how tough is it still trying to juggle to be on top of the game? So there are three parts to it. One is uh, the geographical location and the density of the population. That's one part. As well as the how busy these states are or the cities are. Now, uh, that is part one of how, how the COVID spread and how uh, Maharashtra has shown larger numbers or bigger numbers or higher numbers and a higher caseload. Uh, the second part is also maintaining transparency of data where we maintain, we ensure that whatever we have with us, reports are showing to us, we are also explaining to people. The third is the treatment protocols, uh, testing, tracing, treating, and ensuring that uh, we isolate these patients and treat them better, and we build capacities to be able to isolate such cases. And also, depending on the escalations, we central, uh, decentralize that depending on who needs what uh, level of, um, uh, I would say, medical supervision. And the last is vaccination. But vaccination is something which is controlled. Of course, the entire treatment protocol is also coming from the center because of the Indian Epidemic Act and the Disaster Management Act, all of that in place. But in terms of building capacities, in terms of ensuring there are enough beds, ICUs, ventilators, etc., that was something that Maharashtra state government worked on because we knew going by the history of pandemics in India, Maharashtra was going to face a higher caseload. If you look at the history, it has been the case, whether it's Gujarat, whether it's Maharashtra, that, that is historical because these cities have been busy. Uh, they, they are port cities, they are connected through air, they're connected by land. So it was bound to happen. So in terms of strategy, uh, we are also planned for a third wave. We do not know how intense the third wave would be, but however, if you look at um, how numbers are rising in the UK, how numbers are rising in, the, uh, in Israel, we would want to be prepared. But we have also observed that vaccination has ensured that there are lesser, there, there could be a higher caseload of cases. But in terms of mortality, it has brought down the case of mortality a lot more. So if a third wave needs to be pre prevented to, I mean, from a disaster to strike, like what we saw in the second wave, then we need to vaccinate our population. So vaccination is coming from the center. It is not something that is under our control. So it depends on the center's availability to the states. 
so when you say, speak about pune yes on some days pune gets a lesser amount of vaccines because of what we've got in stock sometimes um, mumbai may have a lesser stock of vaccines so it does happen that that is something we would need to balance along with the central government but that is something we are working on we try not to politicize anything but everything we put as a perspective is also politicized so i'd stay away from that but how much no i get that but how much of a juggle really is it you know how do you decide where you know with the limited number of vaccines where do you send the vaccines do you want to send it to thane do you want to send it to mumbai do you want to send it to pune how do you you know it, that that's a mental juggle as well is it or is 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 it all very statistical so what one also has to realize is uh, mega cities like mumbai pune etc they also have uh, private hospitals and 25% of the allocation from the uh, you know center is going to the private hospitals so at times there are people who are willing to pay so what we are concentrating on is vaccination in rural constituencies we are also concentrating on ensuring that whoever is willing to get vaccinated and who is willing to walk to the center and register at the center or walk into the center we vaccinate them on priority we do not uh, we we are as of now for, for i would say it may sound a bit weird but uh, in terms of vaccine hesitancy that is something we are going to be tackling later simply because first we would want to vaccinate the willing population which is happening and cover and try and maximize the second dose also for uh, our intention was to c- cover a large amount of population with the first dose at least which we have managed to do the second dose is something that uh, we are catching up on but yes our total concentration is on those areas where when we are talking about free vaccines that our concentration would be to ensure that rural areas areas which are seeing high de- case load high positivity rate are prioritized in terms of vaccination and we keep talking about vaccine drives we keep talking about ensuring that everyone gets vaccinated for their own safety and their family safety no it's a, it's it's remarkable the kind of vaccine hesitancy that is still around you know given that we're we're looking at the delta variant and we know that it is so uh, you know it spreads so very fast and uh, also with with maharashtra the cases that apparently the first case was uh, you know found about in april i think uh, the first uh, delta variant case was registered in april and that's been some months from now and the way this variant is going what is really the fear in the state uh, as far as the state is concerned we've observed that um, uh, you know we are left with a lot number of cases as compared to let's say delhi delhi has seen a sudden rise and a sudden fall uh, in terms of oxygen uh, requirements too but in maharashtra it has plateaued and it isn't falling so those that is a area which we are trying to address as to uh, is there a difference in variant we it, it could be that delhi saw a higher alpha variant and we are seeing a delta variant because it was uh, you know first observed in vidarbha region so that is also something that uh, does uh, you know worry the task force and the task force is working out on a strategy to be able to create micro containment zones in areas which uh, ha- are seeing high positivity rates and ensure that uh, testing does not come down to a level where we aren't uh, unable to trace these people so we are doing that but we also need to keep a balance between um, you know opening up places where they see a higher amount of vaccinated people like mumbai is seeing a challenge with the higher numbers of people who are vaccinated but in terms of lockdown they are facing a bigger lockdown because of local trains which are the lifeline which are not still operational so we need to at least reach a comfortable level to ensure that uh, we can open up in the truest sense the the big uh, issue that remains all india pan india is the fact that you know the tracing the testing the genome sequencing i think that 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 has always continued to push us back you know since the pandemic started in a sense would you think that uh, you know where maharashtra stands it's adequately handling it i would say uh, the first thing that the chief minister chose and uh, was to engage with people of the state as well as uh keeping politics aside keeping all the concerns of high case load aside he said the higher the case load the better we know how much the spread has been and uh i would say history would judge us for being transparent and for being honest with our data 
and history would judge those people also who've tried to hide data which has caused a bigger damage in terms of spread of the virus so i wouldn't uh, get into that but what i would say is the first priority was to ensure tra transparency to ensure that deaths are recorded to ensure uh, covid tests are done higher testing is done in terms of testing we are the highest state in terms of vaccinating we are the highest state in terms of ensuring this transparency um, there have been many media reports of various states uh we've had some data uh, analysis of various states which show, showed a spike in numbers but uh, uh, people are not able to address why this spike has happened maharashtra has been clean with its numbers so you see it so when history is recorded of this pandemic what would matter is the clean data that is coming from the state so we should not be hesitating from sharing data and this is not a game of one upmanship we are fighting the pandemic together and we are we have to fight this on a war footing we cannot have secrets amongst our own that can cause damage in the longer run so that is something that the state government was very clear about we are not going to be uh, cowed down by the negativity that's coming we are going to be honest with our people and i think that has mattered a lot when the supreme court also mentioned about the work that maharashtra has done when who spoke about the dharavi model when the mumbai high court spoke about the mumbai model no absolutely it's been there for everybody to see uh, priyanka you know it's 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 been something that a lot of others uh, needed to you know it, to watch and to actually copy because the way i think maharashtra even went around trying to say that if there is a third wave we will be on top of the game and you know you can i i i get that like you mentioned you know i think we have to go together we can't live in isolation in a country either but you know in terms of what you can do in isolation i think maharashtra has been doing really well and i'll just take a couple of questions that come along somebody asked uh, whether the mumbai local trains would start for the fully vaccinated people anytime soon while uh, it would sound very good that we uh, start the um, local trains for fully vaccinated how do you differentiate would people be willing to share their vaccination report every day or do you assume that people would be there at in such la the kind of uh, volume of tra tra travelers you see on local trains who will do the checking that is one question that every single resident of mumbai should ask themselves how will we uh, ensure that those who are not vaccinated do not hop on to that train once you've opened it for all are we saying that oh we will only open it up for vaccinated people how do we check those how do we put these measures in place those are perhaps questions that we will look at answering and trying to find out a solution sooner rather than later simply because mumbai is the lifeline of the city and for businesses to resume in the truest sense it, that's the only way forward but we also have to keep in mind that there is a third wave which is lurking and uh, we have to be careful about that the second thing i uh, must mention that in terms of maharashtra whether it was with oxygen etc we we continue to do an oxygen audit which was very important uh, when other states saw peak in oxygen usage maharashtra also saw it but maharashtra was prepared for it what you need to do is to be prepared building capacities now when we talk about the third wave many say that those who are unvaccinated may face a larger chunk of uh, the the issue seriousness of the cases so that is also something where we need to build capacities for people below 18 years of age who might contract the virus young children who might contract that because experts globally are saying that a task force has also been on it but there are some experts in within india who continue to deny it which is fine but uh, as far as local trains are concerned that's a call which is a very sensitive call to take and can only come with expert opinion if i was to be asked i would say that uh, we should be always uh, considering we've seen a very terrible second wave across the uh, country we should be just cautious about what we do next no oh, fair enough i, I agree um, the other thing as you mentioned as well you you briefly mentioned children and i wanted to bring that up as well because the big concern remains in the third wave is for, by and large all experts have been talking about the fact that it's going to hit children they've also specified that at least 10% of uh, children in maharashtra 10% of those who get affected in the third wave that does hit will be children what do we do when children are still not getting vaccinated how do we go around this uh, priyanka so uh, there are two thing the two ways i uh, see it a the families uh, those who are above 18 in the family that has children below 18 years of age they at least vaccinate themselves and uh, follow all the cautions uh, that have been spoken about multiple times about getting uh, basting mask up and ensuring that children are not going into crowded zones crowded places those are and not stepping out of the house unnecessarily that's point 1 point 2 
is vaccination for the young, for, for peop- uh, children below 18 years of age. Now, Pfizer has opened it up in many, uh, I mean, of course, US was the first one to vaccinate pe- uh, ch- uh, children above 12 years of age. Uh, now, many countries have opened that up for ch- uh, people, uh, children below, t- uh, I mean, I would say pre-teens, teens, uh, who are those who are below 18 years of age. So that that is something that... Uh, uh, the Indian government, central government would have to take a call. They've been speaking about the Zydus Cadilla uh, vaccine, but I don't know when that is coming. We do not have a timeline yet for that. So they have started a third phase trial. We don't know the data yet, but the data that we have from other countries of vaccines which are there, and if we are talking to them, if we are giving them emergency approvals, then might as well introduce them for our children. Yeah, I think that, you know, I think it's actually, personally, I think it's imperative for children to get vaccinated as well. But um, children have been, you know, as I call them, I call them the silent victims, honestly, of this pandemic, uh, Priyanka. You know, they've been there. They've seen a lot. They haven't said much. And yet they're going through a lot. You know, they've been online. A lot of them are fed up with online. It's, it's It's not a fair system. I think they've learned the hard way. The gadget's not everything to be honest, but how does the state plan to, you know, looking forward into what experts are saying is going to be the next epidemic, the mental health of our children? Is there any, you know, is there any focus that's coming on that? No, no, actually, uh, this was something we realized uh, very early in this, uh, when when uh, pandemic hit Maharashtra, in the sta- uh, phase, uh, uh, the first wave itself. Uh, we set up uh, what we also introduced was public private participation where uh, uh, through CSR, we also engaged lots of corporates to come and contribute, work with us. Uh, we facilitated them to be able to set up hospitals. So we've got many uh, corporates who've come forward and helped. And one such was um, an initiative. I don't know which company this was, but uh, as part of their CSR, they had started a mental health timeline. Uh, where we uh, sh- we all shared the numbers of that mental health uh, time uh, numbers uh, call center numbers, which where people would address their concerns. We people would speak to them and un- understand what their concerns were, what their fears were. But of course, what you mentioned about children being the silent sufferers and silent victims, there uh, there is something. Yes, this is something we we need to look at at as an area where. Children can pick up the phone and speak to, uh, you know, counselors and find out how to overcome their anxiety. I have seen my own two children uh, having to study online. They can't concentrate for too many hours. They are distracted easily. They do not, they sometimes want to bunk simply because it just goes on and on for them. So it does, it's very mentally taxing. And of course, they are, uh, you know, children uh, live in an environment which has many more people around them, surrounded by friends, surrounded by peer, uh, peers of the same age. So they can share their issues. They can share their problems in a friendly manner. That is all denied to them. So yes, I do agree that that is something that um, we could look at and uh, an area we could work on. But in terms of mental health, we have been discussing that. Even the chief minister has been discussing that. We've uh, launched many such programs to help support uh, those who were also orphaned because of uh, having lost their parents due to COVID. Those are things we've introduced. But yes, there's always a space to do, be able to do more. You mentioned those who've, who've been orphaned by COVID. Is there also a system in place to make sure that those children are not exploited? That is a big worry too. Yes. So Maharashtra government, after the central government had uh, laid down its policies, even Maharashtra government came up with with its own policy to be able to support these children. The mental uh, health uh, helpline numbers was something that we've shared. Uh, We've also ensured that all the uh, child welfare centers are adequately equipped to be able to handle such cases to ensure that no such adoptions take place, which are uh, where there's no legal uh, process uh, involved. I saw a lot of social media handles tweet away about some babies that could be adopted, which is absolutely illegal and un- unnecessary to do because there are processes in place. So we've created awareness about this. In terms of education, we have fixed a monthly um, income for these children, as well as ensuring that they have sufficient equipments to be able to continue with their education. We've uh, taken care of their fees as well till they are 21. So those are things that we have worked on. And uh, in terms of, of course, nobody can ever make up for the loss of loved ones. But the least we can do is to show that we are sensitive to their loss and be able to compensate in some way to those who have lost their loved ones.
very, very hard on these children, really, Priyanka. Uh, there's a question that's constantly coming. I think it's uh, either with somebody who is pregnant or has somebody who's pregnant around uh, uh, saying that, can the government send out circulars to companies asking them that, uh, you know, can we mandate again, work from home for pregnant women? Sorry, uh, you, uh, uh, the government should send out a circulars to companies asking them that uh, pregnant women should be allowed to work from home. Is this something that is, uh, uh, can you hear me, Priyanka? Yeah, yeah, I lost you in between. No, okay. Uh, they, I think they're saying, can we mandate work from home for pregnant women? Uh, absolutely. I think uh, if, if there is a certain company, etc., which is uh, which is calling pregnant women to work in times of COVID, I definitely think this is an issue I would want to take up and ensure that uh, women feel safe. But I would also uh, ask such family members to look at the option of getting their women members who are pregnant vaccinated as well. Look at that option. I think I would always be on the uh, side of being safe than depending on others to be able to change uh, the circumstances. So uh, vaccine is something which is open to them. They could look at that. But however, I agree we should look at uh, ways to ease the pressure of them being stressed out, A, because of their own uh, health uh, uh, issues, also having to travel to work, having to come back to work and then handling the responsibilities at home. So that is something that, yes, I definitely look at in a way which I can uh, at least for, get some kind of leniency. I mean, some days of the week can be working from home. I'd be very honest and upfront about it. Uh, uh, we cannot control private companies from doing what they're doing. We can only send a notification. We can only issue a guideline. Uh, unfortunately, in terms of um, implementing them, that is something that the private companies would end up doing, uh, creating their own systems. The other thing that, you know, I, I, I've been wondering about is the fact that for women, uh, especially, uh, you know, who are younger, who are studying in colleges, a lot of them have now are now going to fall through the cracks in a sense that, you know, A, when it comes to education, B, it also when it comes to vaccination. I mean, they're not the priority for education. They're not the priority for vaccination. How do we as a country go forward and, you know, give them the kind of help that they will require post the pandemic? Yes, so uh, I'm very glad you asked this question because this is something I'm planning to take up even in the uh, parliament session this time, that the inequity of it all. Many people laugh at me when I say this, but we are 48, 49% of India's population. You cannot have a vaccine gap which is above 10% between the male and the female. Absolutely. So there is something definitely lacking. And if there is a lacking, and something I had written about too, that when we are living in a country where women are falling through the cracks, like I said, the education is inaccessible to them. They're forced, to, forced into child marriages in many states. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it was uh, reported from Maharashtra too, but we've come down heavily on that. So child marriages have become a reality. Uh, women are being sold off uh, by family members to a groom who has money to pay, uh, who maybe doubled her age, etc. So those are issues that 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 is point one: the education uh, being denied to them. Second, uh, uh, the third issue being that they most of the women in India do not have smartphone access to technology. So uh, for them to be able to uh, get a, a vaccine slot for themselves, to be able to decide whether they want to get vaccinated is sometimes coming from a decision taken by the, uh, you know, the male member of the family. So that is also something that they are dependent upon. And third was the walk-in, which I uh, continue to speak about, that walk-in should be allowed for women. So the fourth is that uh, women are unable to step out and get, get themselves vaccinated. So yes, these are things that I will, I'm planning to raise during the parliament session, that this is something we cannot uh, look away from. And uh, it's, a, it's a problem we have to address. And whether it's we create special time, uh, you know, uh, hours or slots for women, where only women members can come and get vaccinated in some areas, but I did hear Uttar Pradesh had created all women vac vaccination centers too. If something like that can facilitate women to come forward and get vaccinated, we must uh, do that. No, I think it's very important, and especially because I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of them have, the education has been disrupted in this last year. And, uh, you know, I mean, families that have scrambled for 
just to earn their livelihood have given up on the fact that the girl doesn't need to go to work. I know we're running out of time, Priyanka. I'm going to quickly take one question for you. Is the Maharashtra sure, government sure. working on vaccinating higher education students so that classes can be resumed for them just like Karnataka government has started? Uh, actually, Karnataka government has started uh, like we started. And that's, again, something that Aditya Ji and I had taken up for students who were going abroad, vac vaccination for them, because the only COVID shield was the only vaccine available. 18 to 44 at that time was facing a challenge to be able to get vaccinated. So what they've started, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Karnataka isn't... Uh, 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 isn't vaccinating everybody who's in higher education. I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, jump into that conclusion. But yes, we are doing very targeted uh, vaccination drives. So like we did for students who are going abroad, we are also looking at those who may have to appear for their exams shortly. So those are things that we are doing. But 18 to, for, for, uh, you know, anyone above 18 is now most, in most places open for all. So there's nothing that really stops anyone from getting vaccinated, really. So what are the big challenges now for the state going ahead, like looking at, say, the next two, three months, Priyanka? I think it's next two, three months steps. are very, I would say, crucial for uh, the state as well as for India. And I think India shouldn't be overconfident because we did that in the first wave and this, we, we saw what it did to us in the second wave. We need to vaccinate in higher numbers. We also need to ensure that uh, we have enough capacities in terms of ICUs, ventilators, and uh, the oxygen plan is in place, like the Supreme Court had asked them to come up with an not just oxygen audit, but an oxygen report, and an oxygen uh, plan in place where we can uh, transfer oxygen as and when needed and areas needed and states needed and a more targeted way of being able to reach on time. So those are things, um, God forbid, we may not need this. But every uh, spike that we see in uh, countries like um, uh, UK and Israel and many other, Malaysia, etc., even Singapore, Singapore, in fact, has come up with this idea of learning to live with the virus. So they are going to be opening up their country and uh, allow their people to travel because they believe that it's time to live with the virus. Another risk that is happening, but they have vaccinated a large amount of the population. So those That's are things, but India cannot afford that liberty. India would need to uh, be a little risk averse at this point in time till a large chunk of its population is not vaccinated. And most importantly, I think we really need to build our capacities on vaccines. We really need to ensure that uh, if, even if you have to bring in the Compulsory Licensing Act to uh, ensure co-vaccine is produced in various other labs in India, we must encourage that. If you're talking about importing vaccines, so we have to get moving on that. I've been hearing Moderna for past three months yes. and nobody has seen Moderna in India. We've been hearing of Pfizer wanting to come to India, but nothing really has come off it. Even I would say Sputnik has uh, been able to under deliver because of uh, challenges that we are seeing. We are still not able to streamline our vaccine, um, you know, how we are going to get vaccines and the amount of vaccines we need. So that most, is most important. Mm -hmm. Vaccinate large numbers, at the same time build capacities and uh, see the, you know, I would say, uh, uh, pra uh, find out the best uh, practices across the world to be able to overcome the third wave. Priyanka, there's a question, isn't it a discrimination? Basically, how, how do people who are ignorant about how to book their slot online? I think that's a big, big uh, reality and awakening for us in terms of even the children and online studies. No, I think uh, earlier there was definitely an issue because everything was managed online. But now every uh, vaccination center also has a walk-in, uh, which again, the central government, when they took charge, they, uh, when, they took, uh, when it became centralized again, they, they did start uh, walk-in. I don't know the percentage of walk-ins that are allowed, but those who, uh, in fact, we would also want to do door to door. But I'm sure that will also be rolled out soon enough once we have adequate vaccines. All that hesitancy that we see, all the issues that we see with walk ins, um, then the tech divide that we see, then inequity in terms of gender divide that we see, is all coming because we have a shortage of vaccines. The minute you have vaccines, adequate number of vaccines, it would become easier for people to be able to get access to that vaccine. Right now, the only the reason why there is an inequity is also because there's a shortage of vaccines. So uh, walk-ins are allowed now, walk-ins are happening now. So that, that bit, I don't think, is something which is really uh, a cause to worry. 
A lot of experts, though, uh, Priyanka and Maharashtra are saying that a large population, percentage of the population has already got it. And that, you know, you have to keep an eye out now on reinfections. That, that, that can be another big worrying uh, issue, right? Because uh, reinfections is not something that we've really dealt with. I think we, we saw a lot of that in Delhi in the second wave, but I, 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 don't, I have not heard too much about it in the rest of the country. So uh, in terms of reinfection, of course, there, there, there could be, um, but you won't see a surge in reinfections. That in case you're able to control a third wave, you're able to vaccinate a large amount of population, even if you see a, a reinfection, it may not, and if that person has got themselves vaccinated or may, with the first dose also, you won't see the, the seriousness of it. So I'm hoping, again, I'm hoping, because we are all playing blind here. We don't know what, are the, what will work and what doesn't work. And by the time we thought this has worked, the, vi the, the virus has mutated into something else altogether. So um, again, in terms of reinfection, uh, we are all playing blind here. I, I can come and confidently say that, oh, reinfections, if you're vaccinated, may not be as severe, but it could be a, a different case altogether. So all what we know and what has worked uh, across the world is masking up. And double masking, single masking, whatever masking up has worked and uh, getting vaccinated has worked. So if we can do that, uh, I think we'd be slightly uh, way better than what we saw in the second wave. You, you may see a rise in numbers, but in terms of fatality, you may not see the numbers that, and that we saw. That's crucial, as, that's crucial as well when we are, you know. Uh, looking at the to uh, at the bigger picture, uh, Priyanka, I think someone was a bit unhappy about the the walk-in slots, and maybe you can check about those later. But I have to let you go. <laughs> and uh, before I let you go, this is there anything that you want to say to your people in terms of you know watching out, you know, staying safe? All I tell them is that even if you're double vaccinated, if you've got your double dose and you feel that now you're the king of the world, you aren't. And it's always better to be safe than sorry. Don't step out. Don't plan that holiday yet. Don't head towards Manali. I've been seeing pictures from I Manali. And, it too. And, 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 and it leaves me gasping for breath, really. So all I'd say is let's be responsible, not just to our family members, to the citizens, as citizens of this country. Mask up, even if you're double vaccinated, because we owe a huge amount of debt to the society we live in. So let's be more responsible. Let's go get vaccinated. Take your neighbors for vaccination. Help them get uh, vaccinated. Help senior citizens get a slot for themselves. Take them to the nearest vaccination center. Encourage people to get vaccinated. We are doing a lot of camps in Mumbai where we're talking about sleeve up Mumbai. We're talking about get, let's get vaccinated Mumbai. Make it sound cool because vaccination is cool. And uh, masking up is cooler. So all I'd say is that stay safe. Keep your surroundings safe, keep your family safe, and keep everyone in the society safe. That is all I'd say. Yeah, because only if we do this collectively, are we going to see the end and of And keep testing. Yeah, tunnel. and Jutsa, one very important thing which people forget in the hurry for vaccination, they forget that they've stopped getting themselves tested. Get tested. Because that's also extremely important. Everyone is getting tested only, of course, when they're heading towards the airport and uh, some states have, it, uh, have a mandatory requirement like Maharashtra has every entry and exit from Maharashtra, you need to have an RT-PCR. But there's no harm in getting yourself checked and do not shy away from getting checked. It is only making it safer for you if you get to uh, know earlier rather than later that you're facing a problem. No, totally agree. I think I think it's very essential if you can. And, you know, if we have the facilities, when we have the facilities, at least, you know, go ahead and use them because they're meant for us. Uh, Priyanka, thanks so much for taking the time out. I know you are very, very busy. And we will speak again, hopefully, at the end of this tunnel at some point. Yes. But thanks so much for taking the time Thank out you today. So much. And good luck with your pup. Thank you so much, Jyotsna. Lovely talking thanks. to you. Thank you. Thanks, Priyanka. Thanks. Thank you for this fabulous talk. Bye. Bye.